If you are a parent, a caregiver, legal guardian, and you have a child, that child deserves that nurturing, healthy, engaging space, period. Jana is one of the most inspiring women I've met through my time as a video fellow at Community Change. She's a business owner, lifelong learner, and a strong woman who puts so much heart into everything she does, especially at Innovative Daycare Corporation, a childcare facility she runs in New York. Her goal is to give kids and their families the empowerment that they need while also providing for her own family and paying her employees a living wage. When my parents first came to the U.S. with me, a five-year-old, and my sister, a four-year-old, they leaned heavily on community and family friends to watch and to raise my sister and me in a new country. We didn't have any immediate family close by, but we were lucky to have people like Jana in our corner. For millions of families and child care providers, COVID-19 only amplified decades of underinvestment and unappreciation for this essential work. A lot of these children come from single parent family households such as myself, right? That many of them come here and this is their space where they are able to have so much fun, where they are provided with so much love. These young learners deserve this space. It's not a privilege. You know, the children that I care for feel like it's a privilege. They shouldn't feel like it's a privilege. This is the way it should be for every single child across this great nation. We need to build a childcare infrastructure that is affordable for all families. When families can't afford childcare, it affects their ability to keep a stable job and everyone suffers. We need affordable childcare to get parents back to work. My mission has always been to support the most the families that are most in need. And so 90% of my families are subsidized. I also have two full-time staffers, two mm -hmm. full-time assistants that I have to be able to provide for them as well as support, pay them a living wage. If you don't invest in childcare, you can't expect for any other sector to progress. Local cities and neighborhoods and individuals like Jana can't solve this problem on their own. Federal relief is crucial to building the care infrastructure we need. Like Jana said, the government must invest in childcare now to create a healthy economy that works for all of us. And when it comes to childcare, it is a fact that home-based providers are predominantly made up of women of color. They literally cannot afford to support their own families on the income that they are living on. So as a provider myself, the inequities that I face is the fact that I have to be underpaid, undervalued, underappreciated, and always questioned about the space that I create, how I'm teaching the children, what I'm teaching the children, Childcare justice is racial justice. Our childcare system is led by women of color who have one of the most important responsibilities, providing the foundation for all of our children's futures. And yet, they're among the lowest paid in the nation and are going hungry, struggling to pay for housing and other basic needs, and oftentimes unable to take off for holidays or sick days. Communities of color also struggle the most to afford basic needs like childcare. With long-term investments, we can reduce how much families pay for care, pay providers a living wage, and get women back to work. When childcare wins, everybody wins. This isn't a political issue. This is a human rights issue. This is a basic need. I'm very optimistic that the pandemic was able to shake up our worlds. When you uplift communities, you can't expect the generation that is coming after you uplift those communities to not want to do the same. You can't because they're going to be reflective and imitate exactly what was taught to them. So if they're taught to support each other, you know, to, to be able to come together, if a community is able to, to do that, you can't expect for our world not to become a better place.